Oh, I am not including that. <laughs> I am not including that one. Just point to it. Do something. Hey YouTube, I'm Tamed here. So behind me I have a brand new 2024 Ford Bronco Wild Track Series with the Sasquatch package. I'm pretty excited to go over the details with you today because this has always been a vehicle that I've really been interested in. In today's video I'll highlight the interior exterior, give you my top three likes and my top three dislikes. We'll talk through the resale value or the projected resale value on the Wild Track here. Then we'll wrap up the video with do I recommend buying one if you're given the opportunity to. Stick with me. And before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to Kengar Ford here in Cheyenne, Wyoming for lending me this for the day to get behind the wheel and give you guys an honest assessment of this Ford Bronco Wild Track. So if you're interested in this one or any other Bronco, be sure to check them out here in Cheyenne. Before jumping on the inside, let's do a quick walk around and just highlight a lot of the notable details of this Bronco Wild Track here. So, because it is the Wild Track series, it does come standard with the Sasquatch package that is allowing for these 35 inch Goodyear Territory tires, which these mud train tires have an exceptional reputation off road, of course. There's your exact size, which equates to about 35 inches. These are some 17 inch B lot capable wheels. I never really love gloss black on wheels, especially for off road vehicles. They get dirty so quick, but it does look good. I love how Ford did the exceptional job at paying homage to the Broncos of the past. Given it that very boxy like design, I think they really knocked it out of the park. Obviously, you can get a more aggressive option with the Ford Bronco Raptor, but I would argue that even that Raptor. Is almost overkill, right? You get the huge, enormous fender flares on the Raptor. Whereas this, I feel like this looks more mature. It almost looks looks more, I don't know, proportionate, if you will. Carbonized gray metallic is the color, which I think is a very fitting look with all the blacked out accents on this particular wild track. Love the Heritage Bronco script up front. That looks great. And of course, the classic looking headlights look incredible. Up top here, we do have a wild track decal. I like the look of that as it kind of bumps up a little bit. And one thing that's really unique to the Bronco here is you have these little tie downs on each of the front corners, which is really neat. If you're going to put like a canoe or something on the roof of your Bronco, you can tie down here, which is pretty, pretty neat, I think. But look how boxy that is. Just straight up and down up front. It looks pretty cool. With it having the Sasquatch package, you get the larger fender flares here. Again, nowhere near as large as the Raptor, but like I said, this looks more proportionate. We do have a steel front and rear bumper. You can see here the integrated parking sensors all throughout the front. And underneath, you can get an idea of the Fox suspension that this Wild Track has in a steel skid plate up front. Love the classic heritage looking taillights out back. These rectangular taillights look great. And similar to the FJ Cruiser, I really appreciate the fact that it has a rear swing out like this. I think this is pretty neat. Once you pop it out, you can then pull up the back glass. 
and a huge cargo space with a lot of headroom and entry entry point room up top, which I think is great. I think Ford has done a really good job at combining simplicity, you know, keeping a lot of you know a lot of hard plastics in here. But I don't think that's a bad thing per se. A lot of hard plastics, but a lot of modern creature comforts. And when we get up front there, I think you'll see what I'm talking about. Pop that down. So this does need to be open. This needs to be open for you to actually open and close the back glass. See that kind of entry point there? I can see a lot of people maybe messing that up. But yeah, let me know what you think of that side swing out, out back. Kind of like what you find in the FJ Cruiser, as well as the Lexus GX 460 and, and older ones. Let's take a peek at this window sticker. Hopefully you can see it okay. But look at that MSRP. 67500 about. That's pretty crazy. This is super expensive. Obviously, you're getting a lot. This is a very off-road capable vehicle here, but is it worth that much money? Can give you an idea. It does have the 2.7 liter EcoBoost motor here with the 10-speed automatic transmission. Upgraded leather interior in this particular example. Here's your optional equipment. 360 degree cameras, a lot of off-roading goodies as you'd imagine within the Wild Track series here. But the base MSRP, we're looking right here, just under 61,000, but with those options bringing just under five grand, and then destination, that's what brings us up to a pretty large price point there. And that just seems a little crazy. There's your fuel economy, you're looking at 17 miles to the gallon. On average, you don't buy this to, to save on gas, that is for sure. So this does have that optional hard top. Otherwise you get the soft top, which I don't know. Based on everything I've heard, the soft top is very, very loud. Whereas this, I think in my opinion, is kind of loud enough. Any, anything louder than this would be a bit ridiculous. So let's check out the inside. Before we do that, one thing that's kind of unique I thought was, look at the side view mirrors. They don't move. They don't swing out with the doors. They're not attached to the doors. They're attached to the front of the vehicle here, which is kind of unique, I think. While we're looking at it, you can see the 360 degree cameras underneath. Obviously the side lights here, you have your blind spot monitor sensors up top. Everything you'd kind of expect with a 2024 vehicle. All right, let's check out this interior with the upgraded leather uh, in, inside here, which I think looks pretty incredible, especially with that Bronco, the bucking Bronco there, looks pretty awesome. 10 way adjustable seats. And this right here, I love this. I love these grab handles that they've integrated within here. You got it right there. You got them on the sides as well. Although I must admit, naturally you want to reach up here for right here. So grabbing right here just doesn't feel like the best, uh, best point to hold on to as you're getting in and out of the vehicle, at least for me. It takes some getting used to for sure. Love that we have Bronco embossed here. That looks great. Very comfortable seats. A lot of the materials in here, like I mentioned before, you know, pretty simplistic, pretty, pretty cheap in places. However, I think they've integrated, you know, 2024 technology and creature comforts very, very nicely. So I think it's a really good blend because they could easily overdo it with too many creature comforts. And I think kind of takes away from the overall appeal of a vehicle like this. Window controls are here in the middle. Mirror controls. They're all here in the middle because you can remove the doors. You can pop up the doors by pulling straight up and off. I think there's two bolts you remove and you pop off. Obviously, same goes for the hard top. So this could really be a, a ton of fun during the summer months. This does have Ford Sync. We'll pop in there. We'll fire it up here in a second. Wireless, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all the stuff you'd come to expect. This right here, I'm excited to show you that. You can kind of get an idea goat modes so go over all terrain modes is what that stands for obviously four wheel drive here with the four four automatic which is standard on the wild track in particular and all your off-roading modes here in the center another bucking bronco there you got them all throughout the vehicle to include look at this got your own little vin placard here and i love that this is built in america ladies and gentlemen so built up the michigan assembly plant 
Whereas the Ford Bronco Sport, if I recall correctly, they're all made out of Mexico now. So obviously two very different vehicles at the end of the day. Very simplistic controls here for your climate. And of course, new music controls, very simplistic and I really appreciate that. You push the start over there, up top here. I'm just a, another more kind of cheap feeling material up top. Nothing to write home to mom about. There's an idea of what that hard top looks like. All right, let's pop over to the other side and fire it up. Give you an idea of what the door panel looks like. You know, all this material is very purposeful because they want you to be able to clean it easily. You know, I hate it when people say, oh, you can hose it out. Very few people are going to hose out their vehicle. But, you know, you can get it wet easily without any kind of concern that you're going to damage anything uh, long term, right? All right, let's hop in here and fire it up. I love the bucking Bronco on the steering wheel. Awesome. Foot on the brake. Push to start. That 2.7 liter twin turbo V6 purrs to life. More of your off-roading controls up top here. Front center diff lock, front lock, rear diff lock, uh, your turn assist right here, and your traction control and your hazards. You do have six auxiliary uh, switches up top, which is nice, already kind of pre-wired and ready for you to go. If you want to put like an aftermarket light bar or something on the vehicle here. Give you an idea of the steering wheel controls. Pretty basic and what you'd expect. Really what we've gotten used to. Your lane keep, some of your additional quote unquote nannies, which I can see some people may be meowing about that. You know, there is a lot of, you know, safety features in here that I think for a lot of off-road enthusiasts might almost be a little overkill. Like lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, just a couple things that, I don't know, they start to get in the way of your driving experience, unfortunately, depending on who you talk to anyway. So here you go here, another, another look at those climate controls. You have, do have a wireless charging tray down here, which is nice. Let me shut the door here. Hit OK. Give it a couple revs. Does have a rev limiter at 4,000. You only have your unlock and lock controls here on the doors. Let's roll down the windows, let you hear it a little bit better. Oh God, what do we got there? What do we, okay. This feels really staged. <laughs> okay, all right, I'm sorry you gotta see this. What, what does it say on her shirt? What is it? What is that? Okay. <laughs> Wow, all right, that felt staged. I'm sorry you had to see that, but. <laughs> all right, someone got us that as a gift for the record. I wanna make that clear. We're very cautious not to wear it in public. <laughs> all right, so more kind of unique material here. Um, I'm not even sure what I would call that. It's just like a vinyl. Like a, a little bit more of a texture to it, if you will. Pretty bare bones. Uh, center console here. Just two cup holders. Not too much to write home to mom about. So we'll hop out, I'll pop the hood and show you what we're working with with this twin turbo V6. Before hopping over there, let me real quickly show you the back seat. It's not a ton of space by any means, but enough. The, the good point of this one is you have a ton of headroom. Right, especially with that, uh, the hard top, removable hard top, you do have a ton of headspace. So if you're taller, you're not gonna have any issue fitting back here. Let's go check out this engine here. See if I can do it with one hand. Uh, let's see there, nice. So it does not have a, um, you know, automatic struts, if you will. It does have the bar that you pop up, as you can see here, but not the most beautiful engine bay. You got a lot of wires and tubing popping everywhere. But I mean, that's kind of what you'd expect with a kind of a smaller displacement motor here, uh, but still cranks out some pretty tremendous numbers. You got 330 horsepower and 415 foot pounds of torque. That is a lot of power cranking out of this 2.7 liter, right? 
So I'm gonna go ahead and get behind the wheel and give you guys my honest thoughts of the driving experience. So first impressions when you set off in the Bronco Wild Track here, with the hard top in particular, you do get a lot of road noise and wind noise. And for people who have driven Jeep Wranglers their entire life, like this will not be <laughs> any, any stretch of the measure a surprise to you, right? You expect to hear what you're hearing here. Uh, but for me, I, I've actually never owned a Jeep Wrangler or any kind of hard top like this. So it is new to me and I, I don't love it, but I'm sure I'd get used to it over time. All right, let's check out a zero to 60 in the Bronco Wild Track. We'll slow off the line. You can feel the turbo spooling up. Nice. Yeah, once you get past that, you got some of those rocks flinging up. Good thing we got those fender flares, but you can definitely feel that turbo lag. It is abundantly clear. It is overt, which you'd expect from a, a, a smaller displacement motor, right? You don't have that raw power right out the get-go. But once those turbos spool up, those twin turbos, you definitely get that, that torque throwing you back in your seat. So I've only gone over just a few smaller bumps, but yeah, the Fox suspension here definitely is pretty harsh on road driving. Obviously, it is tuned for off-roading. So keep that in mind, but just for day-to-day -day driving, it will feel a little harsh for a lot of people. Um, and honestly, when I have gotten used to a lot of Fox suspension in other vehicles, often TRD Pros for Toyotas, and they, they're a lot more absorbent, if you will. Obviously, it's all based on how the suspension is tuned for the vehicle, so let me be fair there, but these ones do feel a bit harsher than what I'm used to. One thing you notice right away is just how incredible the turn radius is in this and this is exceptional when you're off-road right if you're off-roading you need to have great turn radius so let's do a few little circles here to give you an idea of just how <laughs> this is insane i wish i can I wish i can give you a better idea of just how great this is i'm gonna get out of the vehicle and show you what we're looking like out here this is awesome All right, now let's talk through my top three likes and my top three dislikes. Let's start with the good. So for starters, I really love the fact that it is so customizable. Between that and its utilitarian feel, really make it a fun vehicle to own, I think. So being able to swap out the fenders, swap out the rear front and rear bumper, being able to just adjust everything and, and just swap it out easily. Take off the hard top, take off the doors, that makes it a lot of fun. And for those reasons right there, the Jeep Wrangler, that segment has become wildly popular within America. So that's my first one. Just how customizable and utilitarian it feels. We'll kind of combine them into one. The second one, I've already hinted at it throughout this video, but I love how simplistic it is on the inside. But at the same time, Ford has done a really good job at balancing some modern tech refreshes into this. A perfect balance between that simplicity and having the modern creature covers that we'd expect from a 2024 model here. And my third one would be the off-road prowess. Of course, I couldn't put it through the paces today for you, but this vehicle right here feels apart. We have the goat modes there that we talked through. You know, we have that Fox suspension, you know, the rugged front and rear bumpers on it. It is a rugged body on frame design, which I love. You don't find that within the Bronco Sport. That's a unibody design, whereas this is the real deal. Kind of like what you find with like a Land Cruiser, with a Toyota 4Runner, like a truck based design is what you'd expect. And one more fun thing I'll throw in there for my likes is we'll sneak one in. I do love that it's made in America, right? This is produced out of the Michigan plant. And that to me is a lot of goodness. A lot of vehicle manufacturers are kicking off production to cheaper labor countries like Mexico predominantly. And I love that Ford is keeping the majority here in America. And now the part where you want to beat me up, my three dislikes. For starters, it does feel a bit a bit loose and what I mean by that is when you're driving it things just kind of rattle a little bit more and that's largely due to the hard top so kind of take it easy on me I'm not used to driving it but it does have a lot of wind noise and a lot of road noise because of that and I just don't love that my second would be the power delivery having that 10 speed automatic transmission and that smaller displacement motor here turbocharged motor it has a lot of lag at the beginning and the first couple of shifts feel a little choppy and they feel a little quick and I just don't love that overall feel. Now my third dislike here is the price tag right we're looking at $67,000 for this Bronco here. 
I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I don't, I'm not thinking about this the right way, but to me, that just seems about $15,000 more than what this truly should be. It should be low 50s in my honest opinion based on what you're getting here. But I guess that's how things are, unfortunately, these days. To me personally, I would probably try to buck up and get the Bronco Raptor, mainly due to resale. Sure, you're spending more for the vehicle, but you're likely going to lose less throughout your ownership, if that makes sense. You'll likely lose more on this throughout your ownership. To be fair, if I was gonna buck up and get a Bronco Raptor, I think I'd probably just end up getting a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392 at that point. They're about the same price, the low 90s, which is extremely expensive, but at least with the 392, you're getting a, that giant V8 within it. And to me, that lends a lot of style points here in 2024 because, well, V8s are a dying breed. So might as well get your hands on one while you can, right? And let's real quickly talk resale. For starters, do you guys remember when these first were hitting the lots during the pandemic? You could not find one for MSRP. Four dealerships across the nation were truly taking advantage of people left and right, taking advantage of your excitement of the brand of this new Bronco. And boy, did they lick their chops when they got these hitting their lots because they knew that they could sell it for ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 over sticker price and just capitalize on it and line their pockets. That drove me nuts. And I think that drove a lot of people away from the brand, unfortunately. I mean, you tell me what your experience was if you were looking for one throughout the last few years. Thankfully, now you can buy them at sticker easily. And I think in large, most cases, you can actually get them under MSRP pretty dang easily now, which is good. That's refreshing to know. Um, when you look at the resale value of the Wild Track here in particular, you are looking at about a eight to ten thousand dollar loss after you drive it off the lot and drive it for let's say fifteen thousand miles. You know they don't hold value exceptionally well, but at the same time, you expect to lose money when you buy a vehicle and drive it off the lot. There's very few vehicles where you can drive it for fifteen thousand miles and not lose all that much throughout your your short ownership. The Raptor version of it, however, it tends to lose a little bit less. On average, three to five thousand dollars over that first fifteen thousand miles, seemingly. The large MSRP price hikes are a large piece of that equation, though. With the Raptor in particular, this too, but the Raptor saw pretty large MSRP jumps throughout the last two years. It just keeps hiking them up every single year. And because of that, that lends itself for better resale value. If you bought one, let's say in 2022, the 2024 models cost a bit more, allowing the resale of your 22 to be a little bit better, if that makes sense. For this here, last year in 2023, this was $63,000 roughly. For the same spec'd out version, you're looking at 63,000. So this has gone up about $4,4500 over one year. So in my honest opinion, would I recommend buying this Bronco Wild Track here? Yes and no. And I'm not just saying yes and no to be a total cop out here, but I honestly believe it is going to be based on your current predicament and your current situation. If you already have a primary daily driver, this makes sense. To me, this is just borderline a little overkill to be a primary daily driver, especially if you drive often. The fuel economy is not that great, uh, but just the overall driving experience, all that road noise, it is just a bit much where it doesn't feel comfortable to be a daily driver, at least in my opinion, okay? So I think for this, a lot of people who do buy it, they end up buying it because it is their secondary or third vehicle that they can really enjoy on the weekends, take to the trails. To me, that is the purpose of the Bronco Wild Track here. Let me know if you agree. All right, guys, we'll wrap up the video there. As always, I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to tune into these videos. I really enjoy checking out these new vehicles and providing my honest thoughts to you guys. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing, especially as we try to build out this new channel here, Untamed Reviews. Your support means a lot, and I certainly appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Do it. <laughs>